So we're on the takeoff roll now. We're just uh, just passing 100 knots, and at the moment everything is fine. Veteran 737 pilot Chris Brady is about to take me on a terrifying flight. Approaching the uh, the rotate speed. There we go. So we're just easing back on the uh, on the elevators by moving the stick back, and you see the aircraft becomes airborne. In this simulator. We're replicating the 12 minutes pilots on board the Indonesian Line Air Flight 610 experienced before crashing into the sea in October last year. Now the flaps have retracted. This is the point at which the MCAS would, uh, would come alive. In a brand new aircraft, the Boeing 737 MAX, a computer flight control system called MCAS hidden in the plane and unknown to pilots, suddenly activates. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. I'm stopping there because that's already Whoa. looking very uncomfortable. Whoa. And I'm going to try and pull back out of that. I'm going to have to use trim to help me out of it. OK. So and you can see how dramatic that was. That's happening irrespective of anything you're trying to do. That, that's, yes. That's just happened whether you liked it or not. Yes. MCAS has the ability to automatically and repeatedly take control of the plane. And on this line air flight, it did just that. Perfect. The computer program had malfunctioned and allowed the pilots just five second intervals to regain control. So I now think the problem's gone. I think the problem's solved. But what we don't know is behind the scenes, in the black boxes, they're counting to five. And as soon as they count to reach five... It happens again. Back down we go again. It's misbehaving. And you look out the window and, oh my god, you, you, you're in the dive again. It's got a mind of its own. Its logic is programmed ten seconds on, five seconds off. And we don't know that because we as the, we of the pilots have never been told. It was never in our manuals. Again and again, Chris Brady fights the rogue MCAS system, but it's a losing battle. It will start to trim down, so let's go in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you see that we're now in a very, very steep dive. Wow. I'm not a pilot, but uh, that makes me almost sick to think about her. I mean, me too. Me too. It's such a horrible situation to be in. It's unimaginable. 610 lost contact with air traffic control after crashing into waters of the... At 6.32am local time, Line Air 610 crashes at extraordinary speed. ...friends of those on board appeared helpless and inconsolable. Killing all 189 men, women and children on board. And we learned that there was a system on the aircraft which we had no knowledge of. It wasn't in our books. It, we hadn't been trained to it. It was absolute blindfold in a dark forest for us. Five months later, despite Boeing's assurances its new jet was safe, another 737 MAX crashes into the mountains of Ethiopia, its pilots fighting to the death to take control. At 8.38 a.m. on March the 10th, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 takes off from Addis Ababa. It's considered one of the world's safest airlines. But shortly after takeoff, Ethiopian Flight 302 is suddenly out of control. A critical sensor sending information to the plane's new flight control system called MCAS has malfunctioned. MCAS thinks the aircraft is in a stall and literally takes over the controls pitching the plane into a steep dive. It's almost identical to what happened to Lion Air Flight 610 just five months earlier in Indonesia. 
But Boeing had since assured pilots further disasters were avoidable, as long as they followed the safety checklist. What Boeing described to us was that simply you go to a known checklist, but what they failed to recognize is that this was a complex, intense emergency because the airplane's telling you, you're about to stall. So that's happening right after takeoff, within meters of the Earth. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, that's not good. In this flight simulator, British 737 pilot Chris Brady again replicates what's happening in the cockpit. Each time you notice we're getting lower. The Ethiopian pilots would have been trying to follow Boeing's checklist, but what they didn't know was that the MCAS system will repeatedly turn on and off. It means they have only five seconds of control before MCAS overrides the plane, forcing it to nosedive. If you were to time how long it would take me to find runaway stabiliser on this list, and go to it in the book, page 9.9. .9. As you're nose diving. And it's barely enough that's, that's time for the pilots that's, 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 to consult the Boeing me, checklist, which can only be found in a paper manual. OK, so that's taken me, what, about two or three seconds? Mm -hmm. So I've only now got two more seconds, potentially, before MCAS comes alive and starts trimming me down. For me, this is all outrageous on so many levels. It is. These are unintended consequences of an ill-thought-out add-on that was necessary. There, there would have been calamitous noise on the flight deck. The aircraft was going faster and faster and faster, so there was a clacker going um, to, to tell the crew that they were overspeeding. And it gives you an indication of how overloaded those pilots were. Nothing, even though they tried the checklist, it wasn't working for them. So this is all happening in seconds. It is a sledgehammer to the head, followed by ball-peen hammers to the forehead, and then comes the chainsaw what we now know as MCAS. And that chainsaw rips through that cockpit and it's relentless. The pilots were literally in a tug of war with their own aircraft. Yes. And the aircraft was just powering at a 40 degree nose down attitude, which would have been terrifying. Six minutes, they must have realized, oh my God. Yeah, it is horrifying. Yeah, it's unimaginable what what the flight must have been like. What would the passengers have felt in both those flights? Would they have known pretty quickly that things are, things are not good? It's very sad. It's been terrifying. Because of those dives, um, for them, they must know quickly that something's not right. I'm certain of it. The crash site strewn with personal effects, eyewitnesses gave their version of the final seconds. It went straight into the ground with its nose, it then exploded. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.